Okay, this isn't a very hard problem, but I just want to draw your attention to sort of a way of thinking about this, right? So our goal is always, let's get rid of earbuds and all that stuff. Uh, our goal is always going to be when we're trying to <clears throat> set up equations like this. We looked at an example yesterday where we really had to include two variables to start with, or it was convenient to. But whenever we can, we prefer not to, right? If we can, if we can write expressions in terms of the smallest number of variables, variables we can, that always helps. Uh, so what about this case? The sum of four consecutive integers is 222. What's it mean to be consecutive integers? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Negative seven, negative six, negative five, et cetera, right? So in a row, um, we could, we could if we wanted to, for our integers, we could call the first integer something like W and the second integer something like x, and the third, something like y, and the fourth, something like z. But that's not helpful in a way. Because when I come up with an equation, the sum of all those equals 222. That's four unknowns. That means I've got to, I've got to have a minimum of four separate equations to solve that system if I've got four unknowns. You always need at least as many unique equations as you have unknowns when you're solving a system of, or when you're solving for for multiple unknowns at the same time, right? We'd rather not have to incorporate four different equations. Can we instead write this differently, so in terms of a single variable? Like, what could we call, for example, if we do try something different, what could we call the first integer? W. We could call it W. I'm just going to call it X. How about? We're used to X's, right? So if the first integer is X, then what's the second integer? X plus one. You got it. And the next one would be x plus 2, and so on and so forth, right? I'm just going to follow that, that trend. So when we set up an equation, this would be a pretty easy equation to set up then. We could just say something like x plus x plus 1 plus x plus 2 plus x plus 3 equals 222. I've only got one kind of variable in there, so I can easily just collect like terms and solve for that, right? Okay. What about something like this? I just want to make one little point on this. The length of a rectangle is one more than four times its width. If the perimeter of the rectangle is 62 meters, find the dimensions of the rectangle. So in situations like this, it's sometimes helpful to just have a picture, right? If you have a picture, sometimes you can avoid having to define separate variables for the length and the width, because you can just add them to your picture, like the rectangle. So here's our rectangle. The length of the rectangle is one more than four times its width. So which, talk to me, define a variable. What do you think, suggestions? We need to start with some unknown one. So which one should we define? Which one should we name? The length or the width? The width is right. How come? We'll say the width equals what x? Yeah. Okay, so on our picture up here, we'll just put an x in for the width. Why do we want to start with the width being x and not call the length x? Okay, so right, the length, let me paraphrase. I heard a couple things in there all right. The length is written in terms of the width, right? So if the length is written in terms of the width, then we got to start with the width being the the basic unknown, I call it x, a single thing, because we're going to have an expression that we're going to need to define the length. If the length of the rectangle is one more than four times the width, i got to be able to call the width something in order to, to write that expression in terms of the width. So what would that be then? How do I say that, one more than four times the width, if the width is x? Yeah, 4x plus 1 is good, right? And now that I have the dimensions of that rectangle written in terms of a single variable, I can do whatever I want. I could come up with an expression for the area if I want to. I could come up with an expression for the perimeter. In this case, they want perimeter. So what's, what's our formula for perimeter? Plus two, plus two, OK, and, and you're getting that because yes. perimeter is just, in ter not in terms of x's, but just in terms of widths and lengths. The perimeter is just what? 
two, length, two times the length plus two times the width. It's just the distance around it. If, if I traverse the rectangle, I've got to go through two lengths and two widths, right? So we come up with the equation then, the perimeter, which is equal to 62, is just two times the width plus two times the length, right? Once again, I've got a single variable here. I can just simplify. So I get a, I can collect like terms. I've got two x's showing up now, but when I distribute and collect like terms, I could isolate, I could come up with a single x and then isolate that x, right? Make sense? That's not a hard equation to solve now. When I solve it, what am I solving for? Here's the other danger. We could solve this whole thing, and let's just do it really fast. It's very quick. If I distribute the two, I get 2x plus 8x plus 2 equals 62. Now what? Combine like terms so the 2x plus the 8x is 10x. And let's even skip a step. While we're at it, if I subtract 2 to this side, I get. So what's x? 6. If I divide both sides by 10. So we're tempted to just say, okay, well, the answer is 6. Right? But it may not be. Because think of the steps you go through here. When you do a word problem, you're having to go through this, you know, this, you've got to kind of shift gears. We're starting off with some real world situation, a real world geometry situation. And then our goal is if we want to solve this thing, we've got to go into algebra mode. That's what algebra is good for. In calculus, 90% of what we do in my AP calculus class is algebra, right? Algebra is sort of the nuts and bolts of how you get stuff done in math. You've got to solve for something, you're doing algebra, right? Uh, so we shift into algebra mode and we crank through our algebra. You're all great algebra students. You all tell me that x equals 6. But now we've got to shift back into real world gear and see what does that mean? We have to interpret our mathematical answer in terms of the actual problem we're trying to solve. What does x represent geometrically? The width. The width, okay. So then we know that the width is 6. Now what's the length? 25. Because we have to, once again, we know the value of x. We need to evaluate the expression for length for x equals 6 and get 25. And that's what it's asking for. What are the dimensions? Dimensions are 6 and 25, right? So in Moodle, it'll ask if there's multiple answers. It'll just like, if this is the answer box in Moodle, just so you kind of know how to deal with this. If there are multiple answers, it'll just say enter the answers separated by commas. So it doesn't matter the order. Our dimensions would be 25 and 6. Okay? Make sense? All right. You can go. Before you go, here's one thing I want you to think about. Just two seconds, and we'll talk more about this tomorrow. Here's kind of the topic for tomorrow that we're going to launch off of. I want you to, I want you to ask yourself, is mathematics invented or discovered? Because they're very different things, aren't they? Is it created or discovered? You discover something that the implication is it's already existed. If you make something, you're creating it from nothing, right? It doesn't seem like a very important thing to consider, but it has a profound impact on how you think about math. Is it invented or discovered? Think that over. We'll talk about it tomorrow. Okay, you may work. I'm going to put the assignment up right now, the third one. Or the fourth one, sorry.